Hey GED students, um, I had an email this week from Sherrit who emailed me this question. She wasn't sure how to solve this uh, equation here, so let's take a look. Uh, it says solve for x, and first of all on the GED there's two kinds of equations we need to solve. Um, there's regular linear equations, which is what most people learn to solve first, and those are simpler. And then there's quadratic equations, which uh, we need some more challenging skills for. Well, this is a linear equation. This is the simpler version, even though this one's a little, little complicated, uh, because it has plain old regular x's. If it was a quadratic, it would have x squared, or it would have some variables to the second power. Okay, but it's not a quadratic, it's a linear, and so we have three basic steps. Uh, I call these the wisdom principles of solving linear equations. Now, wisdom principles meaning that it's not like if you don't go in exactly this order, you're going to get things wrong and the whole world's going to blow up. It's not that strict, okay, guys? But these are just my three wisdom principles that'll get you through just about any linear equation you come across. So first principle is simplify. Simplifying is what we do uh, to uh, expressions. It's when we obey the operations. Basically, when we do what the symbols are telling us to do, like that says plus. So if I do that addition, I'm simplifying. So first step, I always recommend that if possible, you simplify the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equation. The two sides of the equation are two separate expressions, so you can sep uh, simplify them separately. And so that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to look to see if there's any work that I can do on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. Um, and indeed, I do see some work I can do. So let's look at this left-hand side first. Notice that this 3 is shoved up against this parentheses. That means 3 is multiplying with that grouping, and I know how to do that. I can use the distributive property to pass this 3 out to every term in the parentheses. 3 times, three, three times x sorry, is 3x, and if I add 2 3 times, I'll end up adding a total of 6, or another way to think of it, positive 2 times 3 is positive 6. Now the equal sign is going to stay steady and we're going to treat the right hand side as if it's a totally separate expression because it is. And do I see any work I know how to do over there? Well indeed I do. I see this 2 shoved up against this parentheses. That means that 2 is multiplying with that grouping. I know how to do that. I can use the distributive property to pass out that multiplication. So 2 times 2 is 4 and 2 times negative x is negative 2x. Or, to think of it another way, if I take away x two times, I'll end up taking away two x's. All right. Now, your, your simplifying is not necessarily done in just one step, so make sure that you examine it now uh, to see if there's any more simplifying you can do. So let's look at this left-hand side first. The only thing to do over here is the addition. And I can't do this addition. 3x and 6 are not like terms. So this left side is not going to simplify any further. Similarly on the right, the only work to do here is the subtraction. But I cannot do this subtraction. 4 and 2x are not like terms. So I can't subtract them. We can only add and subtract like terms, the same kinds of things. So like x's with x's and plain old numbers with plain old numbers. All right, so I'm done simplifying, so what do I do next? Well, a really next great rule of thumb is to make sure you get your variable terms to the same side. What am I talking about? Well, variable means letter. And we can see that we have a couple of terms here that have letters in them. Uh, look, I have 3x, but look how that's on the left-hand side. And I have negative 2x over there on the right-hand side. I want the variable terms, the 3x and the negative 2x, to be on the same side. I want to get the x's together. Okay, so I am going to move one of the variable terms. Now you might ask, well, which one should I move? And the short answer is it really doesn't matter. You could move either one, okay? No big deal. But I'm going to do what most students are the most comfortable with, which is to take my variables over to the left. So I'm going to move minus 2x. Now the way to do that is to do the opposite. The opposite of subtracting 2x is adding 2x. 
Now be careful, a lot of people want to divide right now. Ah, you are not dividing if you're taking away the entire term. I'm taking away the entire term, the negative 2 and the x together. And we always move terms with addition or subtraction. So make a little note if you're taking notes here. When you get the variable terms to the same side, it's always with addition or subtraction. Okay, so I'm going to add 2x. Now you might say, Kate, you can't just go around adding 2x because you feel like it. And you're absolutely right, I can't. Um, if I add 2x on the right-hand side, I have got to keep my equation balanced. So I've got to jump across the equal sign to the left-hand side and do the exact same thing. Add 2x over there. As long as I do the same thing to both sides, I'll keep the two sides of my equation balanced and I'm safe. Now, let's see what my new equation will be after making that change. 3x plus 2x is 5x. I haven't done anything to the plus 6, so it's still there. Equal sign stays steady. And then on the right-hand side, subtracting 2x and adding 2x zero out, so there's nothing there. So all I'm going to be left with is that 4. Cool. Now that I got the variable terms to the same side, now it's really easy to do the last part. And this is the part that I think of as the solving part. But this is when we work to isolate the variable. Get the letter alone. So in math speak, isolate the variable. In plain English, that just means get the letter alone. Okay, so we are going to keep using inverses to move everything that's over here on the left-hand side with the letter over to the right. Okay, now remember when you're solving, you work the order of operations backwards. So you should move any terms, anything adding or subtracting, first. So I'm going to move this plus 6. So I'll do the opposite. The opposite of adding 6 is subtracting 6. Again, I can do whatever I want to an equation as long as I keep my balance by doing it to both sides. And now I'm going to see what my new equation is going to be. On the left-hand side, adding 6 and subtracting 6 are opposites. They zero out, and I've got 5x left. My equal sign stays steady. And on the right-hand side, now, if you were doing this on the GED, you would have a calculator. So if you're bad at adding and subtracting negatives, feel free to do this in your calculator. But 4 minus 6, I'm starting with $4 and then spending 6, I'm going to end up 2 in the hole, or negative 2. Now, I'm almost done. My x is almost alone, but i got to get rid of that 5. Uh, what is this 5 doing right now? Well, 5 and x are shoved together, so they're multiplying. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to divide. We move things to the other side of the equal sign using opposites, inverses. Again, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So I divide both sides by 5. And now let's see what my new equation will be. On this left-hand side, multiplying and dividing by 5 are opposites. They cancel out, so I'm just left with one single x, an x. And on the right-hand side, you might say, Kate, I don't know what negative 2 divided by 5 is. And then I say, well, you know, then act like a lazy mathematician. When lazy mathematicians don't want to do ugly decimal division, they just keep it as a fraction. What is negative 2 divided by 5? Um, it's negative 2 fifths. <laughs> and I am done. All right. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer it.